Hey everyone, welcome to match one of three of Jun Tarmo Hawk playing against Affinity in this matchup. Deck Tech was posted this morning, so make sure you check that out if you want to learn more about Jun Tarmo Hawk. There's always going to be a link in the description of these match videos. And of course, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate your subscription. Those numbers really do count with the YouTube algorithm and letting others find my channel, so would really appreciate your support. So this hand is fine, it's keepable. Mulligan, but uh, not the end of the world. Turn one Ragavan. We have no response to it, although there are two creatures they'll probably respond to. So let's see if they're willing to sacrifice one. Okay, that's what I thought. That's okay. I wasn't necessarily hinging on Ragavan with this kind of a hand. <laughs> We're about to get ginger brooded. So, end of turn, play our Thieves Guild Enforcer, and now we're going to play our Nighthawk Scavenger. <laughs> Gotta read Ginger Brood a few times, because not a card you see very often. We now have a 6-3 Nighthawk Scavenger. That is formidable. Thank you very much, Affinity. We're actually in a good spot here. Obviously going to attack in. Okay, that's what I thought. I figured it was going to get a chump, but it's not really a chump, technically. Okay, they bought themselves a turn. That's okay. Well, that just allows me to mill them more, so I'm not really complaining. Welding jar is going to be annoying, but all right. Thought monitor got something in the air. Cool. We do have a dread bore for that. I mean, obviously they're waiting for cranial plating, which is what I would be waiting for. We've got a second. Okay, well, I was ready to play Han Master here, but a second Nighthawk Scavenger is kind of hard to resist. Now have a 7 3 and a 3 2. Uh, I will take it. And here I guess I'm contemplating dread boring something, but we're in a pretty good spot. Even if they did get cranial plating, assuming they didn't remove Nighthawk Scavenger, we would just chump block with it. Yeah, none of this really matters because we got big things in the air. Maybe we could dread bore one of the thought monitors this upcoming turn. Okay, we're kind of overdrawing on lands, but that's okay. So I'm playing it safe here. They're probably going to use welding jars, but whatever. Just get that over with. I think that thought monitor is the most problematic. And we can slam down our Huntmaster, which will almost certainly secure the win here. Unless they remove it right now. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I always told you with that deck tech. Huntmaster hits the battlefield, we win. So we're going to bring in all of our artifact hate because it all counts as pseudo creature removal in this deck. But there are some artifacts in particular, non creature artifacts, we do want to target ideally. We have the mulligan here. Yeah, that's not keepable either. This is better than nothing. So, mulligan to five. We have zero threats, which is a problem. We do have a ton of removal, though. Okay. All right, all right, all right. It's a lot of Tormod crypts. Okay, we draw even more removal. <laughs> Okay. Frogmite is not long for this world. 
yeah, well, Frogmite is biting the dust there. So Raghavan is our first threat that we luckily drew into. And we will take advantage of no creatures on the battlefield. This patch is useless. Cool. Well, our opponent has emptied out their hand. I think they were... I think they leaned a bit too hard on Tormod Crypts. Because they have one card left in hand, and that's not good for Affinity when they have nothing on the battlefield. And we have a ton, a ton of removal. Okay, and Dispatch was in their hand. Cool, that's, that's fine. They have nothing. Zero. Zip. And honestly, even if they did, we have three creatures we can remove with our current hand. So, I'm not really concerned here. So, they got Frogmite. Which would be problematic because of Cranial Plating, but... So, they're going to have to use Welding Jar here if they want to keep Frogmite. Yeah. Okay. So, that's okay. So we're just going to kill their Frogmite here. And we win. Yeah, I, I, that's, I think as an Affinity player, I probably would have done the same. They were really not going to get out of that one. Uh, again, even if they didn't see our hand, we, were, we just had enough removal to keep us alive for quite a few turns. And in those turns, we're going to draw more lands, potentially more removal or more threats. And we're just going to get them down way too low to the point where Cranial Plating wouldn't, wouldn't be enough. So, we did pretty quick work of Affinity here. Again, actually, this is a pretty good matchup. We have a lot of removal in the main, and as you saw, we have a ton of artifact hate in the side. So, Affinity just has nowhere to go, really. And it's pretty easy picking this for John Tarmahawk. So, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about this match. Different moves, different games, uh, different lines of play. I uh, would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content in general, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really goes a long way to help me out a lot. If you want to become a member here on YouTube, hit that join button, which should be in and around that subscribe button. Check out the different membership tiers and the different perks you get at each tier. You know, I'd love to have you as part of my YouTube community officially as a member. And I think the membership tiers are pretty interesting, have some cool little features in there. So check it out. I would really appreciate your support. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, share my content on social media, watch my content start to finish like you're doing right now. It really does go a long way, so thank you for that. Lastly, if you want to become a patron, check out the Patreon link in the description of this video. Check out the Patreon Rewards Program. In a nutshell, you give me money every month. I use that money to buy a sealed product, which I open up on this channel, and then I give you back that money in the form of rares and mythics at the end of every year. The longer you're a patron, the more rares and mythics you get. Basically, one rare mythic for every month that you're a patron. And the value of those rares are anything really between $3 and $15. Some of them go even higher, as you know. So even if you average out about $5, a month, $5 per rare, that's $5 a month, you get your money back. But odds are you'll make more. Anyway, all that information is on Patreon. There's a video on there that explains it all. We really appreciate your support. Either way, thanks and have a good one.